Good morning, everyone. It's Virginia Schmidt from Divinity Ranch, and I'm coming at you today from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, where it is snowing. And so since it's a little chilly, I may have to put my coat on at some point. I'll show you guys this new hat that I got. I got this back in Wyoming. I hope you guys like it. And also this new silk scarf. By the way, people have asked me about my silk scarves in videos, and I just want to let you guys know that silk is actually one of the warmest materials that you can wear, as well as soft and stylish. So there are lots of good silk scarves in vintage thrift shops. I just want to throw that out to you guys. I am going to be bringing in a fashion used fashion component into Divinity Ranch, which ties in with aesthetic and art and expression and eventually the plays and productions and movies that will all be part of this creative community of healing. So I'm really excited to share that and just to be honest and share my style with you guys because it's something that you can probably tell brings me so much joy. Also, this cute little jumpsuit, oops, which I have unbuttoned because I put my microphone through it was handmade in Missoula, Montana. So the handmade stuff, da, 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 da. the used stuff, it's, it's all good. I didn't come here today to talk to you guys about fashion, although it ties into my joy. And so I wanted to, to share that upcoming part of Divinity Ranch with you guys. Today I came actually to talk to you about this book that my older brother Hal gave me for Christmas. It's called Breath. The New Science of a Lost Art by James Nestor. And I will put a link to buy this book in the, in the about section of this video. I highly recommend it. It's a book that I honestly can't recommend enough. Um, I would prefer, however, if it's possible for you, even during times of COVID with curbside pickup or just a quick in and out with pre-ordering it to get it from your local bookstore. I used to work at a bookstore in Cody, Wyoming, Legends Bookstore in Cody, Wyoming, and I am all about the local support and connections that happen in places like that in any way we can, like I said, even during times of COVID. So I encourage you to see if your local bookstore has it, and this book is unbelievable. I am going to be talking about it more, and I am in the process of creating my website, which you guys can go ahead and look at if you want, divinityranch.com. My friend and uh, lovely magician, marketing magician and boss babe, which is a new term that I just learned, Alicia of Dawn Productions is making it for me. It's not ready for a full launch, but I do just want to let you guys know about it because I think it's beautiful to share the process with each other. And that imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. I got that from a woman named Selena Sue. And so I love sharing the process with you guys, even if it's not perfect and it's not the big launch yet, you can check out divinityranch.com. And I wanted to mention that I am going to have a recommended books and movies section on my website because I talk about books a lot and integrating these books into my life is what I do anyway, which is what I love sharing with you guys. So I wanted to just share with you some of the main takeaways from Breath. This is a absolutely life-changing book that has me changing the way that I live instantly upon reading it. So again, thank you to my brother Hal and my sister-in-law Jamie. Jamie of Topaz Salt. You can also check out her website, Topaz Salt, and she's on Instagram. My sister-in-law, who is an amazing creator and woman and mother to my little niece, Miss Maeve Magdalena. So one of the most important things that I have learned from Breath, if I can share with you guys, and maybe you want to go ahead and start practicing it right now. Poco a poco, little by little, even if your nose is stuffy, one of the most important things that we can do in this life is breathe through our nose. Breathe through our nose. We have our nose for a reason and it actually matters a lot as this book is proving through scientific study as well as a lot of absolutely phenomenal research. I'll just share one of them. So I did not know this. I've heard of George Catlin and maybe some of you guys have as well. He is a pretty fam he's a famous uh, the way that I knew him is that he's is his fame for pictures paintings of national parks that he did back in the day including Yellowstone. So I instantly recognized his name. 
One thing I didn't know about George Catlin is that he went and did the most extensive research ever compiled on, um, I believe, up to 50 Plains Indian tribes, many of which no other Westerner or European spent time with. I'm getting a little chilly. I'm going to put my coat on. Pendleton, <laughs> one of my favorite brands. Just in case any of you guys are wondering, I'm not sponsored by any brands. I'm just showing you what I love right now. Maybe one day there will be some beautiful collaborations that can happen, but my mom gave me this coat. Oh, I'm to make sure I'm not covering my microphone. Luckily I have Alicia to check the sound quality of everything. So James Catlin, or I'm sorry, George Catlin, went and did all this research with the Plains Indians. Now let me see if I can find, okay, yes. So this is pretty poignant, right? I'll just read this last. So, Here's what he found. You're not the theme that he found that ran the same throughout all these Plains Indians that he focused most on and that changed his entire life was what? Inhaling through the nose. I kid you not. They would train babies to do this and it was one of it was the common thread and theme of what these Plains in, Native American Plains tribes shared with each other that accounted for their vigor and health. I kid you not, breathing through the nose. Yes, it's that simple. And we can retrain ourselves to do this consciously so that it becomes subconscious and automatic. We can reprogram ourselves to utilize our nose, which is quite vital as it filters and humidifies the air that comes in and also keeps us from doing one of the most detrimental things that we can do, which we all probably do to some extent at this point, unless we become conscious, which is over breathing. So we take in less air with our nose and that's actually a good thing. You'll learn more in this book. So I cannot recommend this enough you guys. I honestly can't. I just want to read you this little part from George Catlin. So again, this is James Nestor and this is at the end of chapter three. I flip to the last page in Catlin's book, Breath of Life, the final paragraph he'd ever published in his long life of research. Quote, and if I were to endeavor to bequeath to posterity the most important capital M motto which human language can convey, it should be in three words, shut your mouth where I would paint and engrave it in every nursery and on every bedpost in the universe, its meaning could not be mistaken. And if obeyed, he continued, its importance would soon be realized. So I will talk more about it. I'm just letting you know two of the things that I wanted to share with you guys that have affected me the most with this book, and I'm not even quite done with it. I'm just a little over halfway through or a little under well a little over because the end is all annotations and notes and such mm. so one of the biggest things that i've been doing that has been a huge game changer for me and clearly just brings us to consciousness of our breath in general is focusing on breathing through the nose even one you know and congestion right is a big thing so just bringing this consciousness if you're not there yet just even being willing to maybe be conscious of the possibility of the import and impact and intent of breathing through your nose. So powerful. And then the other one I wanted to share with you guys, which I have talked about quite a bit, is extending the exhale to be longer than the inhale. And again, you can just come to counting your breath and just even if you make it one second longer, I, there is a breathing exercise you can do for relaxation. This isn't the whole thing, but this is just part of what you could practice and doing it through your nose if possible, where you inhale for four, hold for seven, and exhale for eight. So I'm gonna show you what that would be like. Inhale for four, hold for seven, exhale for eight.
I can feel the re relaxation of just doing that once. But even just noticing, you know, breathing through the nose, making your exhales longer, maybe just practicing exhaling all the air out of your lungs and sitting for just a moment with that emptiness. Unbelievably physiologically powerful. So breath is life, right? And it's synonymous in yoga. Breath equals prana. Prana can mean breath, life force, or life. Like they're all synonymous. So basically, and James Nestor talks about this, and if you think about our body and our brain as like our computer, this is how we, uh, or, or car, this is how we hijack the system or hack the system through our breath. This is, this is where some really powerful hijacking and hacking tools can take place for us to be able to reprogram the system. So breath, you guys, is the key physiologically. And of course, ancient yogis have known this, which is all that this book is about. That's why it's called The New Science of a Lost Art. Because this has been known for thousands of years by yogis and obviously Native American tribes. And there's actually a lot of science around it, but <laughs> and it has not necessarily been mainstream. Because, wow, if it's as simple as our breath, I mean, it goes into things like that actually the greatest indicator of longevity of life is lung capacity. And that the greatest indicator of health in so many ways is how slow we breathe, like breathing slower, actually taking in less oxygen. It, it will talk about that in this book. I'm not going to go into all of it. I'll let you, your curiosity be piqued. And of course, this makes our heart rate slower and more even. So you could also think of the breath as like our hack to our heart um, and all of these things that we consider unconscious that we actually can have conscious control over. So lots of amazing connections to make with that. The last one that I'll make about this that I wanted to make right now is that the most the, mo the most beneficial breath that you can take, and we do this in yoga with the inhale and the exhale, is a 5.5 second inhale, rounded up to six, and a 5.5 second exhale. You wanna come say hi? Come say hi. This is my cousin Katie who I'm visiting in Tennessee. I just wanna show you guys. This is my cousin Katie, one of my best friends in the world. And so I'm wrapping up this video, and I just wanted to share with you this equal length inhale and exhale. It's very balancing breath. It also is the breath, like he shows all this amazing research about how, why is praying or using a rosary or a mala effective on a physiological level? And it's because the rhythm of these things, they do all these scientific experience and sociological experiments about it, basically facilitate this perfect breath, which is 5.5 inhales, or 5.5 breath cycles per minute again rounded up to six what's really cool about that as well is a couple of years ago i was doing a bunch of sleep research for a site that i was writing for and it talked about how one of the reasons that listening to the ocean is something that helps people sleep is because the ocean takes the same number of cycles in a minute six full cycles so in and out of the tide being a cycle per minute. The same way that we breathe in our most optimal sacred breath. So a healthy sleeping human does the same number of cycles per minute as the ocean. Are you starting to see all the connections? So again, three main takeaways. Breathe through your nose. Breathe through your nose. Remember what Jane Catlin said, shut your mouth. <laughs> also, you can, you'll see there are tips in this book to train yourself to stop snoring and to help with sleep apnea that actually has to do with gentle techniques for taping your mouth shut when you sleep. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm definitely going to. I don't snore, I don't believe, and yet I know that I breathe through my mouth when I'm sleeping and so that's a way to train yourself. So breathe through your nose and little by little, even the willingness just starting, just this consciousness is huge. 
extending the exhale to make it longer than the inhale, seeing if you can empty out your lungs consciously to get all of that stale air out to let new breath in. And number three, even um, inhale and exhale. So I'll, I'll end it with that and 5.5 to six seconds per inhale and exhale if you can. So it's like this. balancing out that right and left side of the brain, yin and yang. Wait, okay, so right and left side of the brain. Yes, yin and yang, female and male. Inhale and exhale. So much love to you guys. I hope that these breathing hacks really help. And if there's one thing that you bring to your consciousness today, maybe it's breathing through the nose. Love you guys so much. I'm about to go eat lunch with my cousin. I will talk to you guys soon. And I can't wait to share more books, practices, thoughts, aesthetic, fashion, excitement, joy, love, and peace with you guys. And I can't wait to hear your comments and your um, suggestions to each other. And if anyone's read this book or other books and just all of it in this community of healing. I'm so glad you're here. I love you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Mwah.